Perhaps the greatest lie ever perpetrated on populations all over the world is the condensation trail lie. What we're seeing in our skies is not condensation. It's sprayed particulate dispersions with very few exceptions. Now they shouldn't be there. Jet engines burn clean. So if there's anything coming out of them, it's an additive. They're absolutely not contrails. Contrails do not linger, dissipate, and go into cloud coverage, period, in the report. And I kept saying to people, you know, what is this? Because now the sky is no longer blue, it's starting to turn gray. And what I found was, it was kind of like it was not socially acceptable. You know, we're all going to pretend this is not really happening. And I thought, oh, this is very bad. Most are unfamiliar with a science term called global dimming. That term refers to the amount of direct sunlight that no longer reaches the surface of the planet due to light scattering particles that are building up in the atmosphere. And although many of these particles are from industrialized pollution, the larger majority are from the ongoing climate engineering solar radiation management operations. This engine, a high bypass turbofan jet engine, this is the engine that is on all military takers and all commercial carriers, is in essence a jet powered fan. 90% of the air that moves through this engine is non combusted This engine by design is nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except under rare and extreme circumstances. And again, when we have film footage of aircraft flying at altitude with nozzles visible, turning on and off, that is the end of the argument. Since even before man could fly, there was an effort to try to modify the weather. We have weather modification patents going back a hundred years plus. These are historical films of what can be done with a biplane, a small biplane that carries a very small payload and that much can be done. How much more can a fully loaded military tank or KC-10, KC-135, C-17 Globemaster, how much more material can they put in the air? About 500 times more with a single tanker. How many have been told that the B-17 bombers of World War II leaving the trails is proof this is just condensation? That's a spray dispersion, but you cannot shut off condensation like that. That is not condensation. Weather was a weapon used over Vietnam. Would you expect that to be then deleted from the availability? No. To continue to expand the scientific aspects of it, to have it available in your portfolio of weapons would be a natural process. Therefore, should you expect that it is a available on demand to have the ability to modify weather absolutely within this country and others. Climate engineering is the crown jewel of the military industrial complex. Climate engineering has been used to destabilize and topple nations all over the globe, facilitating military occupations by hostile countries like the U.S. We know that some of these countries are having their precipitation cut off because they have stated so on the floor of the UN, like the president of Iran stating emphatically that NATO weather modification programs were cutting off the precipitation to Iran, but US media never covered it. We have an economic model operating globally, which is operating based on covert force. And I have very serious questions after watching the financial patterns as to whether that financial force or that force includes weather warfare. People were coming to me telling me about this. So because of that, I went to the government in Ottawa under freedom of information. There was a 40 page report of which half the pages were completely blank and the other half had a lot of blank outs. But there was sufficient information to tell me that, yeah, they're aware. They call it geoengineering. One of the big problems is that when we find some new technology, we get all excited by it, by the, the potential benefits of that technology. And often 
implement it and, and use the technology before we have any idea of the negative effects. Shouldn't it be considered that every breath we take is laden with highly toxic particles that are wreaking havoc in our own bodies? Particles that aren't being reported by any air quality testing systems. Any official air quality testing are looking for PM10 or PM2.5, 2.5 microns at best. The climate engineering nanoparticulates are exponentially smaller. They go virtually unreported. These nanomaterials generate reactive oxygen species in biological materials, damage tissue, lead to advanced aging, cause cancer, causative agents of dementia. So, yeah, we might think that we're doing something positive for humanity to save our species, but we're also poisoning ourselves. Eventually, with the team that we formed at geoengineeringwatch.org, we were able to acquire a NOAA flying lab. We were able to test at altitude to confirm the elements that were showing up at the surface. Our intention was to do a point-to-point -point sampling mission. We could see these obvious uh, patterns that were being laid out in the sky. We were really thankful for the opportunity to be able to get up to altitude. And on the return mission, we noticed that that cloud layer had descended. And we sampled below the cloud layer, we sampled through that confluent layer and above it. We found exactly the same elements listed in climate engineering patents, the same elements we found on countless surface tests of precipitation from all over the globe. Some of the smaller particles in here we're looking at on the inner, uh, order of about 415 nanometers long but there's also smaller particles in yeah. there too. This particle seems to be high in aluminum. So, so look at that. Governments all over the globe and the entire climate science community are telling the population urgently that climate engineering operations, solar radiation management operations need to be immediately deployed to try to mitigate the warming of our planet, to try to preserve what's left of its life support systems. And yet when the public, those that are awake, try to bring to the attention of academia and elected officials that we see climate engineering already being conducted in our skies all over the globe. It's already been deployed. Lab tests prove it, film footage proves it, documents prove it. And yet we have the continued denial from the climate science community and official agencies telling us that we're not really seeing what we're seeing in the skies. They tell us if climate engineering were deployed, it would look exactly like what we're seeing in our skies, but then again, they tell us that we're not really seeing what we are actually seeing. The paradox is, the more the climate engineers spray the planet, destroy the ozone layer, disrupt the hydrological cycle, and increase the overall warming of the planet, the more they feel they have to ramp these programs up to try to mitigate some of the damage that these programs have done in the first place. That is the true definition of insanity. As a society, we are uh, like a freight train heading for a broken bridge that uh, is just a few years away from us. And, and I think people don't uh, understand the exponential increase of uh, toxicity in the environment. These operations should be considered the most insane endeavor ever deployed by the human race. These operations are systematically derailing all of Earth's life support systems. In the attempt to blot out the sun, the myopic, short-term objective of trying to cool the planet while worsening the overall warming. The climate engineers, if these operations are allowed to continue, are pounding the nails into our collective coffins. From a scientific perspective, and what we know about nanomaterials and their effect on human health and the environment, this is a serious problem. And it really does warrant further scientific investigation. We need the answers to get to the bottom of this national security problem. If populations around the globe find out what has been done to them by their governments without their knowledge or their consent, there will be a shockwave around the globe that cannot be contained by the criminal governments that have now taken control of our planet and civilizations all over the world. Just bringing transparency will shift so many things. 
but it will make it extremely difficult because you cannot manage an entire planet with overt force, only with covert force. If we bring transparency to who it is in the covert force, it shifts everything. Look at your own health and you know what's going on. And if you love your children, join us in, in fighting what we need to fight. This is a just fight, it's the right fight, it's the right cause. And if the climate engineering operations which are derailing Earth's life support systems are not immediately exposed and halted, all other challenges for the human race become moot because the planet will no longer support life. We are in completely uncharted territory. Virtually the entire web of life is being systematically contaminated and decimated by the ongoing climate engineering operations. On top of all other forms of human activity or anthropogenic activity that are wreaking havoc in the web of life, climate engineering, mathematically, statistically speaking, is the single greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face short of nuclear cataclysm. These elements are raining down to the surface of the planet where we all get to breathe them with every breath we take. This is literally a fight for life to expose and halt climate engineering, man's misguided attempt to play God with the planet's life support systems.